Hey YouTube, welcome back to Universe X. Uh, today's video is going to be a special near and dear one to my heart. Um, mainly because we're talking about the kid, Zeno Harambe. And not only are we talking about Zeno Harambe, I also have to say that now that we've reached this milestone of 1,000 subscribers, we're gonna be doing a fair amount of things to celebrate. I'm planning some stuff out, wanna make sure everything's in line so I can get it off one after another, settle into the new digs. Um, for people that want stuff from Supreme Rival, your stuff is in the mail, so uh, just keep an eye out. Some of you guys are international, and so it may be a little bit longer, but it's in the mail. So, that being said, I just wanted to actually get into the fact that I will be giving away the OG metal, TCG medals at the time as Fire Mallory Graphics, Xena Harambe with my logo on it. This will be one of the cards given away for me hitting a thousand subscribers. And um, I'm actually getting a manga Gohan that will also be given away. Um, just two of my favorite leaders so far in this game thus far. Um, that being said, this episode <laughs> is uh, titled Dark Broly and You, because I feel like a lot of people just need to get a quick refresher just in case, and I really wanna break this down. I think this might be a two or three part segment, because in this one, I wanna go into a bunch of theory and uh, kind of just what we have versus what we're working with. I think the next one, I'm gonna try to get some good people who play Dark Broly on the channel and um, kind of get their perspective and bounce ideas off about where the deck goes from here. So, uh, are you ready? So let's jump into the normal plugs. If you haven't been to the Facebook group, it is a great avenue for information and meeting people that like the same game you do and just finding friends. Um, and you can actually just hop on in the Discord, talk with all of us if you like. There's more than just Dragon Ball Super in there. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, we can actually get into just the Facebook group that I need to be on more. <laughs> just There's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool stuff. And I'm even uploading Doken and soon to be Legends videos on my other channel, UniXDB. So there's just stuff, I just like Dragon Ball in general and I'm happy to just be able to make content that people wanna watch. That being said, jumping into the meat and potatoes of the video. Uh, Dark Broly and you. Brief history lesson, Dark Broly came out in set 11, Vermilion Bloodlines, okay? And in this set, it was kind of weird. You had three Broly's that summoned themselves from the grave. Um, you had the leader, you had the one drop in the ball, and you had the uh, two Toas, okay? Brainwash No More was pretty cool, but the deck was definitely missing a little something, and because all of its pressure came from those six drops, you really lost to Prospect. Multiple Prospects in a game just ended your game. Um, and they can be dropped for one energy, they can be dropped as early as like, you know, turn, it just, it was really bad for you. Um, also, the best deck in the game at the time just had such good matchups versus everything across the board, uh, at least fair matchups, which is Gotenks, and Gotenks had dormant potential, and this deck could only get through to you by floodgating. And meanwhile, its main threat, Gotenks, was two energy that could blow up one of your big, beefy threats and then swing twice. For 26k which is a weird number for dark broly to have to combo out of or 25k I think. so um basically it just wasn't well positioned but as the format kept going people started realizing more and more that the deck was fundamentally unfair um it was able to go wide and normally when you go wide your things are small but no dark broly's are 30ks so it was not the case and then you have additions with the draft box, such as uh, Demigra, another 30k, and this one was insane. You were able to pay two energy to warp something from the field, draw a card, and then swing and take away stuff. So even when your opponent hits you with a counter like Violent Rays, they lose Violent Rays, the card they have to discard, and the card they have to discard for Demigra. So that's actually a massive L. Um, it was with conjunction of cards like Demigra, uh, and the growing popularity of the deck, the people started really realizing that the deck had more gas than it, you know, just was able to. Um, well, that people thought it had. And eventually just kept snowballing. The deck had a couple builds. You could kind of go more towards a, uh, a Russell route and uh, be full tilt aggro. Um, I know personally I was running a ball as build for a while that actually was very, very fun. They just kind of focused on milling stuff to the grave and then going off. You had um, my friend Armando, who's very much so for more of a mid-range, not control, but a lot more defensive Dark Broly teched out. Um, Giancarlo just going from multiple different builds, chesting out different cards. It was just a lot of different ways to play Broly. 
And um, then you have the inclusion of the seven drop, which in just made more innovation. You were able to just throw up cards like Heartfelt Plea without any repercussions. Like you just have it. And if you draw one of your two copies, bam, your awakening turn, which is already your strongest turn, is now going to be even stronger. It's just the deck kept evolving and uh, became more and more popular, but then people started really understanding how unfair it was to play against it. So when you're looking at Dark Broly, its pros have always been its bodies. You are dropping these massive bodies and you're not paying energy for them. So yes, you have plays that take energy, such as your two energy Demigra play, such as your one energy Broly ball play. Um, your negates are gonna cost energy, but for the most part, your biggest threats are coming out for the free, especially mid and late game where you're just removing stuff from the graveyard. You're not even setting up with Broly and ball. Um, it's able to apply mass amounts of pressure. You can normally put a Chompa on a 15k, making a 25k and you have a combo, that's a lot, but putting a Chompa on a Dark Broly is a 40 base k double strike and that's a whole lot. Um, it's oppressive. If somebody doesn't kill you, they still have to get rid of, or you don't kill them, they still have to get rid of 30k bodies before your next turn because otherwise you'll have that much to start off with, swing and potentially sack them off with your activate battle and then bring them back. That's a lot. So this has just always kind of been a thing. Now. The cons with this deck, and I guess I just, I'm not ready to go on the cons yet. One of the pros is that uh, with its previous activate battle that happened before the ban list that just recently dropped, you were able to make extremely defensive walls out of the 5Ks in your hand on your leaders, or make extremely potent shotguns, knowing that anything you put in your drop zone is just going to become fuel for your next push. And that was very, very cancerous. Now, when you go to the cons, there's a couple things, okay? One. This deck, the activate battle allows you to, you know, just discard a um, discard a 30k black battle card, gain 5k combo power for the battle on your leader. However, this is still kind of a one for one basis. One card is 5k. So when your opponent swings with three cards, or swings with a uh, 25k, you have to drop four cards if they're not super combos and you're not negating. You have to get up to. Well, I guess 25k, three cards. You have to get up to 30k in order to not take the 25. And that's three cards out of your hand. That gets old real quick. So, um, yeah, going wide and 20 to 25ks were kind of the bane of this deck. But like, there was a time where Obuni would drop on the field and a Dark Broly player would shiver. Um, now you got dual attack things that make Dark Broly kind of uh, uneasy. Uh, King Piccolo was able to go wide and that made Dark Broly uneasy so you still have the ability to uh that that was always kind of a bane like you know going wide with things that are 15ks will just drain the hand one card per swing um 20k yeah it's gonna be thicker 25k dual attacks anything like that you're starting to really put pressure on them the other con is that dark broly was susceptible to pretty much any floodgate in the game like if it was a floodgate you name it dark broly is susceptible to it um vegeta used in a fury for yellow uh, Violent Rays for red. You have um, freaking um, Big Omori in green. You had Prospects <laughs> in blue. Like the only color you didn't really have a flood against it was black itself. But even with that, you know, black has Tenacious, which is like a pseudo floodgate kind of floodgate, but it would stop the normal game plan of Dark Broly. And it just becomes an issue because Dark Broly is a very, very powerful deck but it gets stopped in its tracks by most floodgates. That being said, you still have to draw said floodgates. So you can be manning these floodgates and you never see them and Dark Broly runs over you. You see them, you feel like Dark Broly's not a problem. This is because Dark Broly is fundamentally unbalanced. So herein lies the issue with balancing a deck like this. Um, you ban the leader, an entire archetype is dead because all the archetype cards are tied to the leader. You uh, hurt the deck too much and you're gonna be sitting in this weird forever flex of trying to flux, of trying to, uh, you know, replace cards that you just hit, limited or banned, but not trying to make them too broken, but trying to make them, it's just not that good. Um, this leader is written in a way where there's really only one thing you can do if you wanna remove him from the meta, and that's either kneecap him so hard he can't come back, or erase the deck altogether. Um, you can't even release silver uh, silver bullets because you have floodgates. Like, Dark Broly is not immune to a single floodgate we have in this game. And it's still a dominant force because if you don't see them in multiples, Dark Broly will still roll over you. So, 
Um, you can't print silver bullets, they'd have to be incredibly oppressive and they would probably hurt the game somewhere else. So um, they decided to, and by they I mean Bandai, errata Dark Broly. Um, now the errata is a pretty soft errata. Um, it mostly hampers defense, but the errata is that his activate battle can only happen once per turn. And that activate battle is to be able to pitch a uh, 30k black battle card and then gain 5k. Um, so what this does, okay, it stops you from being as defensively thick. You can't just have a hand of 15 cards and your opponent starts swinging at you and you're just like, cool, dodge that 5k. Uh, okay, activate battle twice, dodge that. You can't do that. That's the main thing this does. The side thing that it does is um, it doesn't allow you to have the Omega push turn where you swing with four 30Ks and then you swing with your leader and you pop four 30Ks in the activate battle, boosting your leader to 35K and then you start summoning from the grave again because they were already on the field so they're not gonna hit their once per turn clause. It's kind of wild. Um, now that one is a little less rare or a little, a little more rare because you don't always wanna sack off your entire board. That's still six to bring it back. If you attack, if you, if you drop a board of, you know, three dark rollies that's still freaking 18 cards engraved to put them all back you're generally not going to be doing that but it is nice to be able to have that alpha swing if necessary the real big thing is that your shotgun potential when you just put every 30k behind your leader in a champa or every 30k behind a 30k body in a champa or when your opponent all ends you and you defensively shotgun with every 30k you have at your disposal these are the things that the deck can no longer do. And uh, these are the things that a lot of people did find oppressive. You know, you're already messing around with 30K bodies and all of a sudden this dude swings and his leader goes up to 115 double strike. Okay, yeah, that's fair. We really had fun doing that. So, I mean, that's what really got hampered. But you know what didn't get hampered? His ability to just beat your face in. Um, yeah. That's right, the errata did absolutely nothing to change the main source of salt in Dark Broly, and that is its generation of 30k beaters for no energy. Um, people are getting real complacent. Some people before testing were just thinking the deck got hard hit. Oh, well, you know, the deck can't defend itself well. The deck can't shotgun into oblivion. Okay, like, you don't always need to do those things. Like, I can say from personal experience, uh, case tournament, I top aided and actually top, yeah, I top aided and freaking, I didn't go tall. Like, I wasn't shotgunning people left and right. It came from the going wide while being able to go tall. Um, I always remember the game against Damani, literally swung at him nine times in one turn with Black Mass or uh, Mass Sand, Brainwash, No More still in hand, and one more Broly swing. Like, it was absolutely disgusting. By the way, that swings was brought to you by Vindicator and friends. But um, no, I mean, it's like the deck is still able to go just as hard offensively, okay? And that makes it very, 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 very odd to still look at because yes, after they awaken, if you save your floodgates for that turn, you have a pretty good chance of cracking back. You really do. You have a better chance of cracking back than you did before. But while their ability to defend themselves with their activate battle diminished, they uh, still actually can, you know, I don't know, run counters and floodgates. Like, you can still get tenacious Bardocked and not be able to really swing. You can still actually just get uh, rolled by, like, multiple power bursts, Protector of the People. Uh, the Supreme Kind of Gate is a beautiful card. So, all in all, you still have the ability to live as Debro, but Debro is very, 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 very more so fragile, susceptible to getting punched out. Now, this is, uh, as an opponent, what this means is, yes, you have a larger window of closing out Debro on turn three, four, maybe five, but you still can't just believe that because of this nerf, Debro is not going to be up at tables. If you couldn't survive till turn three, or if you couldn't survive Debro's awakening turn before this nerf, you were still going to get tossed by Debro after nerf. Um, it's just kind of what it is. You need to still be able to survive to hit them in the soft places that are now more easily exposed. Um, so 
you're still gonna have to bunch up your resources. I was talking to Armando and it's it seems pretty simple. I mean, you do need to like kind of play the back and forth game, you know, conserve your life, treat it like an aggro match because you're not out comboing those swings and unless you wanna blow all your negates, you're probably gonna have to let them through. So you need to be a little conservative with your energy, uh, with your life. And then when it's their awakening turn, you need to make sure you have those counters ready. Um, most decks have spaces for, you know, techs. If you're running the Gogeta package, you're probably going to be seeing multiple copies of, um, you know, Fighting Spirit. And if there's two Fighting Spirits on board, you don't want to topo them and go neg four. So you're gonna need to manage what weenies they have on the board because they probably have beneficial effects that are gonna neg you over time. Um, Dark Broly is still a contender and you still need to be ready to face it. That's just plain and simple. Um, so, as for its place in the meta, um, Debro is still tier one. It's still powerful tier one. I'm gonna put that out there right now. Um, you can still get bodied by it. Uh, a lot of the set 14 decks cannot measure up to it well enough. And um, it's still strong with even the non set 14 decks. Um, I think that even in a format where red seems to be the by far the best color, we're gonna have starter Vegeta. We're gonna have uh, King Piccolo at capacity some capacity we're gonna have king vegeta uh jiren's are around you already know what i'm gonna be playing that's right that's right that's right it's here these things are here you already know like there's gonna be a lot of red in the format and with that red comes the you know ability for a lot of people to be playing violent rays off the rip but Dark Broly is still going to be the deck it used to be in terms of if you see the floodgates, you see the floodgates. And if you don't, hold on. So you probably shouldn't be siding things that you think are going to be good against Dark Broly. Um, you might want to still make sure that you have some dedicated sides for Dark Broly because it's it's going to be a bit of a ride. Um, I think until the next ban list, Dark Broly is still going to be tier one. Now, I also think that you should probably probably like i'm not gonna say expected to get hit but like the tournament results will speak for themselves if we start seeing debro all over the place then you're probably likely going to end up seeing debro being actually hit hit next ban list because if you guys remember bandai definitely said they were going to release a uh a uh ban list between this set and the next set so what this means at least how i interpret it is that they're going to be watching very closely to what happens in set 14's meta and decide where to go from here so i'm just gonna put it out there like if you feel like dark Broly is too broken uh, and you are not helping perpetuate how snapped it is you might be part of the problem because if a uh, bandai just sees like eight turtles in top eight they're not gonna think Broly's a problem so I would suggest everybody just needs to play what they think is the best deck and let Bandai be able to see actual metrics so that Bandai can, you know, make their decision. Because uh, the top cuts are going to be the best source of information when it comes to what's overtuned, what's undertuned. So this is interesting. But I definitely think Dark Broly will be a massive contender this format. It's still going to be a gatekeeper because it still does a lot of what it was doing that was wrong for the game. It just can't survive as well and uh, even then we can change some things um so that's gonna be pretty interesting um now in the future i don't really think dark Broly is a deck that's long for this world i think that uh, it probably needs to get smacked for other things to blossom so unfortunately even though he's my boy i don't know how long this deck's gonna be around i don't really see it being around for more than another set but uh that's just me so i want to hear your thoughts in the comments uh if you like the content like the video let me know what you feel about it let me know your thoughts on Debro. if you have some testing i'm gonna see if i can like i said get some dark broly players on the next segment and uh, have us have another discussion about dark broly so that being said thank you guys um i'm gonna do a more formal video later but thank you guys for getting to that 1000 subscribers mark um any more support is greatly appreciated we're gonna keep growing the channel keep putting out the content and i will see you guys the next time you decide to join universe x later